Burning a CD is a simple process, and your first step is to pick your disk type. Your options are CD-R and CD-RW. You should use a CD-R when burning an audio CD, because you can't play a CD-RW in as many CD players. But keep in mind that you need to get it right the first time, because after you burn a CD-R, it's permanent. When you're all fired up and ready to burn your music to a disc, select a playlist that you want to burn. You'll notice that a Burn Disc button appears on the screen. Click this and the Burn Settings dialog appears, allowing you to set several options. iTunes typically detects the rating of a blank CD-R and adjusts the recording speed to fit. But, if your blank CD-Rs are rated for a slower speed than your burner, or if you have problems creating CD-Rs, you can use the Preferred Speed option to change the recording speed to match the CD's rating. Another professional touch is to add an appropriate gap between songs, just like the gaps on commercial CDs, so you can clearly tell when one song ends and another begins. From the Gap Between Songs pop-up menu, you can choose a gap from 0 to 5 seconds. When you're playing music from a variety of sources in iTunes, you might find some songs are louder than others, which can run from mildly distracting to downright annoying. The aptly named Use Sound Check option allows you to balance the volume of your songs. Simply check the box to turn on the feature. Select the Include CD Text option to add the artist and track name text to the CD, which can be read by certain CD players. These are often car CD players that can display the artist and track name during playback. Choosing the right disc format is important. With the Disc Format option, you can decide what kind of disc you're burning. Your choice depends on what type of player you're using and what you intend to do with the CD. For an audio CD, an MP3 CD, or a data CD, use the CD-R format. The audio CD option allows you to burn a normal audio CD of at least 74 minutes, depending on the type of blank CD-R you use. You can burn any iTunes-supported music files, including songs you bought from the iTunes store. The MP3 CD option allows you to burn a CD with songs encoded in the MP3 format. No other formats are supported for MP3 CDs. See? Technology does make sense. Sometimes. If you choose the MP3 CD format, iTunes skips over any songs in the playlist that aren't encoded in this format. By using the Data CD or DVD option, you can burn a Data CD-R, CD-RW, DVD-R or DVD-RW with music files. You can use any encoding formats for the songs. An important note to keep in mind is that data disks won't play on most consumer CD players. They're meant for computers. However, data disks are good choices for storing backup copies of music you bought from the iTunes store. After you've set your preferences, you're ready to start burning. You can burn an album or your own playlist. The example here shows how to burn a playlist. Once you're ready, click Burn to start. A message tells you to insert a blank disk. Go ahead and pop one in the drive. iTunes checks the media and starts burning. You see a progress bar and the names of the songs burning to the disk. Burning takes several minutes. You can cancel the operation at any time by clicking the X next to the progress bar, but canceling the operation doesn't undo the burn. If the burn has already started, you can't use that disc again. If the playlist has more music than can fit on the disc using the chosen format, iTunes burns as much as possible and then prompts you to insert another disc to burn the rest. When the burning is finished, iTunes chimes, and an icon of the finished disc appears on the desktop. Now you can eject the newly burned disc from your drive and test it in a player.